If I were to ask you, do you like camping outdoors, or is your idea of camping, finding a holiday in somewhere, what would you say? Outdoors. I said you didn't have to answer. <laughs> Are you a spender or a saver? Are you generous or are you spending? What type of housekeeping are you most comfortable with? Does it look like Hurricane Rita just visited? Or is your house in a constant state of readiness for a magazine photo shoot? Do you prefer pictures of the ocean or pictures of the forest? Do you need the constant approval of others, or are you like, whatever, as long as God's good with me, I'm good? Now, people don't usually answer that one honestly. More of you than will you, you will care to admit you live for the approval of others. Hey. But that's another way to care about <laughs> Would you prefer to watch a movie or read the book? Are you a morning person or a night person? Mm. How many of you are morning people? We love to wake up in the morning. Okay. If you like pets, are they house pets and are pampered and members of the family or are they outdoor dwellers? Or maybe perhaps you're not a pet person at all. My kids. Do you need a lot of time to yourself or would you rather be with people? What, which one would you choose? Same price. Would you choose a Corvette or would you choose a Lincoln Navigator? Corvette. We know your answer. When you, yeah, you know my answer to that one. When you are walking down the street, do you speak to people first or do you wait to respond? if they speak to you first. How are you wired? Being wired is a product of who God made us, but then also who we are who we are is also dictated by our life experiences. Our life experiences impact who we are and how we respond to life and how we respond to situations. Today we're going to talk about two lifestyles. One in particular that we want to emphasize, because today we want to talk about managing the Martha. Maybe not your Martha, well actually your Martha. We want to talk about managing the Martha in you. So let's go ahead and turn our text. We're in Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 38. Check the sermon notes. You got your sermon notes? Yeah. Amen. Okay, good. And Jesus said to his disciples, and Jesus and his disciples were on their way when he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Are you, you want me to control it there? Or? Mark? Are you good? Next slide. She had the button. Okay, there you go. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Thank you. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all of the work? And you know there's a lot to get done here. And I have to do it all. And all y'all going to do is sit here and walk and talk here. Y'all can talk anytime. You know it's work. I'm trying to prepare a meal for y'all. Dude, don't you care? That I got to do all the work myself? Mr. Big Shot, tell her to get up and help me. You're not the traditional role for a woman. Have her sitting at the feet here with the men. She's supposed to be in the kitchen helping me. Now you get the feeling of the environment and what Martha was really trying to say. And then Jesus responds, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. 
But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen that which is better. And it will not be taken away from her. Mary has made the best choice. This um, statement will become clear as we get to the end of the sermon. But when you serve, make sure you eat. Make sure you eat when you serve. First of all, as we look at this text, I want you to take gender out of it. Take out Mary and Martha and put Bill and Ted or Bill and Martha, whoever you want to put in there, okay? Because this text, the meaning of this sermon today is not about gender. Sometimes it's always preached that way, but it's really talking about a personality type. And it's a personality struggle that we all go through from time to time. Now, I want to really put people in three categories. The first category is those people who are the driven, who something has happened in life, there are things that have been said, and they are a certain way because of all the life things and their bentness or like we started off at the beginning, they're how they were wired. So Martha is wired in one aspect. Martha would be the person that would volunteer when something needs to be done. Martha would jump, I'll do it. Something else, I'll do it. Martha's involved in everything. And actually working, just not hanging around. Martha's actually doing something. Then the second category, and it's hard to be in this category, is the balance type that knows when to work, knows when to sit down with Jesus. And then there's a third category. The dormant. They just don't do anything. And so, but I want to concentrate on Martha and try to get people to move toward the center. And then I want to get the dormants to move toward a balanced lifestyle. The problem with Martha is that when everything's over and she's trying to prepare this meal and she's really trying to do it for Jesus and she's trying to do her best, the problem is when it's all over, she winds up being the one who's starving. And it impacts who she is in her life. That's why um, I've always been a pastor that I'm interested in not only are, you know, we have guys and projects and things like that and people doing stuff. I'm not so much interested in people doing stuff as much as people being stuff. You need to be. And if you are whom Jesus has made you to be, then you will do. But our doing never replaces our being. I don't care what you do for God or do in the name of God. You need to know who God is. Amen. In that day, many will say, Lord, didn't I do this? And Lord, didn't I do this? And Lord, didn't I do this? And Lord, didn't I do this? You know what he says? He said, I never knew you. It's not about doing, though being will help you to do, it's about being. We got to learn how to manage Martha. Because we all have a piece and a touch of Martha, depending on the things that we're dealing with. So today, let's just go ahead and let's look at how do, we, how do we manage Martha. Three major areas I'm going to talk about today. First of all, I'm going to talk about what we see. Next, I'm going to talk about what the result is of what we see. And then we'll talk about what can we do about it. Amen? Very, very clear structure today. So first of all, let's look at what we see. Let's go to our text here. What do we notice? Number one. First of all, we notice a hard worker. Martha is a hard worker. We like those types. She has a heart of hospitality. I mean, she is the one who invites Jesus and the disciples over for dinner. Now, this has been a relationship that Jesus cherished. We see it even on the nights before he went into Jerusalem for the final time. He spent his time in this home with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Martha's mentioned first, which probably means that Martha is the oldest. And sometimes when we're the oldest one in the family, we seem to carry more of the responsibility. Amen? Amen. We put a lot on the oldest. Sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's unfair, the amount of responsibility that we put on the eldest child. But Martha has taken some of that on. Not only is it who she is, but it's how she's wired. And now she takes this on. So 
Martha has a heart of hospitality. She reaches out and grabs people and invites them over because she has great intentions. Martha's hospitable. And if we're honest, people usually prefer this type of person. Because Martha is a worker. How many times do we talk about the person who's doing stuff? How many times do we talk about the person who's busy? How many times about time do we praise the person that is so busy that they get home and pass out? Martha's a worker. We like workers. We don't like people who are dormant. We prefer people who are busy. Not only are they busy, they're real busy. Matter of fact, what we do is we don't usually ask someone to do something who's sitting dormant. What we usually do is find somebody who's already moving and tack something else on, right? Amen? It's easier to steer, what, a moving bus, right, instead of a park one, right? And so Martha, Martha's a worker. We prefer that type. So we see this in Martha. Some of you are workers. That's what you put your hat on. If we were to ask people at your job, if we were to ask people in your neighborhood, if we were to ask your family, you are the worker bee. That's what you do. And you work hard and diligent and get it done. And we don't have to say anything to you because you're off and gone. But what else do we notice? Number two, a heartfelt investment. Not only is Martha just a hard worker, and we like hard workers, but we like people who are invested. In other words, what they do means something to them. They're just not doing it. It means something. So Martha, because of her love for Jesus, because their heartfelt investment says, we got to get this done. I'm going to go do it. I'm not going to think about the cost necessarily. I'm not going to think about what all I have to do is that I'm going to go do this. Maybe this is the way you are in your home. Maybe this is the way you are in your job. And we make this investment. And so now I'll just Martha take a challenge here because, you know, we celebrate people who take challenges. You know, we pat them on the back and say, girl, keep killing yourself. We love you. And we you know we do that in church, too. You've been doing the same Sunday school class for 100 years. Praise God. Don't ask for a vacation. Don't ask about being there. What? Are you still saved? Yeah, come on. People don't step up. But to Martha's credit, but then also to Martha's detriment, Martha thrives in these type of situations. Yeah. Give it to me. I'll get it done. There'll be bodies all over the place, but I'll get it done. There'll be people lying all over. <laughs> but I'll get it done. Well, what else do we notice? Number three. We notice that Martha has some high standards. Of course she would. Why not? For Martha, everything, if she can possibly do it, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be perfect. When's the last time you invited somebody over for dinner? And people were coming over and you, you know you had to get your house ready. How did that go? Was there anybody was there anybody left alive? <laughs> and so sometimes if we're not careful. The disruption that we cause to get people over there, <laughs> the cost is way too high. Martha wanted everything perfect. And so she goes into her kitchen and Martha goes into one of those frenzies like, get out of my room, get out of the way. Because she's doing this for Jesus. Come on, think about it. If you had Jesus come over to your house to eat dinner, I mean, you, I mean, how would you act? <laughs> Martha is probably, I don't know, maybe she's cooking her signature manna, I don't know, her lamb that's legendary. 
Maybe she got the little greens on the side. <coughs> Macaroni and cheese. Don't worry, y'all. Lunch is soon enough. Amen. <laughs> Everything's going to be perfect. Not only that, let's, let's look, at, look at this second observation here. Jesus is going to get what she has planned. Now, here's the thing about this story. Is that this probably isn't the first time that Jesus and his entourage have been over there for dinner. But this is the one that the writers choose to give us. Now Martha and Jesus had a very good relationship. We see that later on because of what she says to the Lord that she feels comfortable enough. And there's another place in John where Martha speaks and you kind of say, whoa, obviously there's a relationship going on there. That Jesus had known these people for a while and they were very dear to him and they felt very comfortable with the Lord. So Jesus is going to get what she has planned. It doesn't matter what Jesus wants. It doesn't matter what will suffice. She's going to get, Jesus is going to get what Martha has planned. Now, it's possible that Jesus would have been satisfied with lamb chops. Martha is going to have lamb mignon or something like that. Some kind of dish, outlandish dish. Jesus would have been okay with crackers. But that's not with Martha. And so what happens to us sometimes is that our service goes beyond service to God and it now becomes something that serves ourselves. Hear me. We're not serving God anymore because it's about us. We left God a long time ago. Now we're doing us. Martha left Jesus a long time ago. Martha's on now here. Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be clear. Okay, in the church we need both personality types. You need to know that we need both. The scripture says at the end that Martha, Mary chose that which is better. So we'll get to that in a minute. But our focus is on dealing with Martha. Because Martha has an agenda. Because Martha wants to do something for the Lord. Because Martha has her own standard. Martha has a higher standard than Jesus has. As far as how to prepare food for the Lord. What we see, number four. <laughs> Again, maybe this is from being the oldest child. We have a responsibility with intensity. Responsibility with it. Martha here is intense, y'all. In the midst of all of her preparations, in the midst of all of that, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're distracted by all of the things that you're doing. What happens is that Martha's now service has become a burdensome chore. She's in over her head, and as soon as we get in over our head, then we want to start complaining about what people haven't done, how people aren't helping us, this and that and the other thing. What should be a wonderful occasion has now changed. Her service has become a chore. She's not liking it too much anymore. Not only that, she has tied her personal significance to the task. I'm doing this this way because I want Jesus to like me. Jesus already likes you. He loves you. And so what happens is that, again, it's no longer about Jesus. It's about us and what we can get out of it. That crosses the line. So that's what we see. That's what we notice. What is the result of what we just noticed? Result number one. We see an overwhelmed person that now goes on the attack. Isn't it interesting here that who Mary, who Martha attacks? Of all people, she attacks the one 
whom she's really doing this job for as if Jesus asked her to do something that was way beyond her capabilities when Jesus didn't ask her for anything. Why is this a problem? Because now this is about Martha. This isn't about Jesus. And that's why she's upset. So an overwhelmed person who attacks everybody. And so now she has this bad attitude which Jesus confronts. Now here, well here's what I want you to understand. Jesus did not attack her efforts. Jesus did not rebuke her for her efforts. Jesus did not rebuke her for working and serving. Jesus didn't rebuke her for any of those things. Jesus didn't rebuke her for her hospitality. What she's rebuked for is because of her attitude. Sometimes in our quest to do what we think Jesus wants, we can have a bad attitude. And we can alienate people. Or we can do simple things around our house. Or we can do simple things with our car. Or we can do simple projects around the church. And what happens is that we make the project more important than Jesus. And actually sometimes we use the busyness of the project to get in the way of really having a relationship with Jesus. And so we see a bad attitude when Jesus confronts, but then we see needless anger. The environment that was potentially so sweet has now become an environment that is so filled with anger and frustration when it didn't have to be that way at all. Number two, what else do we? What else? What are? What else do we see? What are the results? We see a person with out of priority, out of order priorities. You know we're getting here. Is Jesus your priority? Or is it you? What's your priority? Now I know again, let's go back to what we started with. How people are wired. I know people are wired differently. And I know sometimes uh, people would rather, instead of coming to church, they'd rather be go doing a project. Or they'd rather go do something else. Or they, they would rather sort of make themselves busy otherwise. Some people see going to church as, you know, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I can do other good things. No. Some people see prayer that way. Well, I'll, I'll go do something and I'll make up for my time of prayer. No. Do you know what Jesus wants more than anything else? He wants your heart. How does He get your heart? He gets your heart through relationship. How does the loved one, the one that you're sitting there beside, your husband or your wife, how do they get your heart? Through time spent and relationship. Relationship. People sometimes try to substitute work for a relationship. Well, how's your relationship with Jesus? Then people start talking about the things that they do versus the relationship that they have in knowing the Lord. Jesus is interested in relationship. Your priority is the relationship. Notice what Jesus tells Martha. You're distracted. You're disturbed. Mary is there drinking from the word of God. It's the better choice. She's being fed. You're distracted. Martha, your priorities are totally wrong. What are your priorities like? Is he first? Number three. What are the results? We see a person who finds their self-worth in what they do for Jesus. Sometimes people like the accolades of man. They want us, somebody to always pat them on the back for what they do for Jesus. Amen? Amen. You can serve the Lord whether or not someone ever pats you on the back. 
In the society that we live in, we always want somebody to praise us and say good things about us. You better be concerned about what Jesus thinks about you. Amen. First, I know those things are nice and nice to have people and everybody needs encouragement, but we don't live to please people. We live to please God. And then sometimes we look at what we do. There are many pastors that I know. They find self-value in a title. They find self-value in a function. The title is just a function. It describes what people do. And they have to have this title and that title and all these crazy things because they find self-worth and value in those things. When Jesus isn't going to call them by their titles... And some people then, God is called in certain areas, they don't think that they can be effective because they got to have a title. Your self-worth isn't in what you do. Your self-worth comes from who you are. Number four. Resolve. A person who misses a meal with Jesus. Now the real food is being handed out at the feet of Jesus. Yet Martha is in the kitchen thinking that she has the real food. You can't confuse what you do versus what God can give you. What you get the benefit from doing something good has is of no consequence to the great thing that God wants to give you. I'm not what I do. I'm what I am as I sit before God and I let Him feed me. That's why I'm so into our folks and things at church and doing things. I want to know what is your relationship with God? How are you allowing Him to change your life? Yes, it's nice to do stuff, but how is He and you getting along. What are you learning about Him? What are you allowing Him to reveal about yourself? How are you growing? How are you developing? How is He continually changing you? Because people would much rather be doing something than to sit at His feet and learn from Him. Okay, so what can we do about this? What can we do? Number one. Choose the best, even if it goes against your wiring. Now I know I'm talking to people, some of you like to read, some of you don't like to read. If I bring up the thought of reading your word, reading your Bible, and reading it every day, and spending time in your word, some of you say, well, I don't read. Well, praise God. In the day that we live in, you can get it on MP3. You get it. There, there, there is no excuse for you not to get the Word of God in you. There's no excuse. No excuse. How can you serve someone that you know nothing about? You won't trust him because you don't know how he works. Choose the best even if it goes against what your tendencies are. What means that I come to Bible study, I sit before the Lord, I learn, I learn, I learn, I get over myself and I learn, and I seek. Amen. I don't care how you wired, I'm going to show you how to make it. Don't tell me what you've done. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags. Don't tell me what you've done. Tell me about your relationship with him. Tell me what he's telling you. Tell me what he's showing you in, your, in his word. Tell me how he's changing you. Sub point. Always make time for Jesus. If you don't have time with Jesus, you're too busy. You're too Martha. If you don't have time for Jesus, you're too Martha. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you don't know how busy I am. I don't care how busy you are. We make time for what we want to make time for. Yeah. 
No, 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 y'all, just, just, just tell the truth, shame the devil, don't we? Say amen. 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 When we want to make time for something, we do. Yep. Yep. Amen. 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 When we want to make time for something, we got time. Amen. Amen. You ask somebody, say, well, I got to pray for it. That means no. That's the spiritual. That means no. Well, I gotta pray. That means no. <laughs> I learned that years ago. Always make time for Jesus. Next, start practicing and make it a habit. Start practicing time sitting at his feet. And make it a habit. Start practicing it. It'll become a habit. And you will grow from it. And your life will change as a result of it. Number two. Stop banking and charting your work and service. We don't, it's not like, you know, how can we think that God loves us according to how much we do? How much is ever enough? When have we done enough? How do we know that? We don't bank service for God. It isn't like, God, okay, we're bartering. Okay, now, God, I'm going to go to church four times this month, and I'm going to go visit three of my neighbors, and we start counting up, counting points with God. God doesn't work that way. Amen. Stop banning and banking and charting your service and work. God wants your heart. He has your heart. He gets everything else. Yeah. God gets your heart. He gets your pocketbook. Amen. He gets your attitude. Amen. Amen. Number three. So this is number two. So, so we need to avoid all sorts of self-promotion about how much we've done. We need to emphasize our relationship with Jesus. We talked about that. And then we need to avoid building a false sense of security that I am with God because of all the things that I do. Finally, number three. Get better at just sitting on the floor. I tell you, the last two weeks, I had the opportunity to visit two churches the last two weeks where I could just come in and sit on the floor. I didn't have to do anything, and I could just be before God. And I could just sit there like a kid in the candy store and just feed on what was being said. And just sit before God and not have any other responsibilities and not trying to do anything. Matter of fact, what I usually do is when I go visit, I make sure I dress down and I go lay down on purpose. But usually I visit my friends and I make sure that they look at me and I go, sit in the back and I go, this means hi, but this also means no. <laughs> I don't need to be recognized. And today we have with us, who cares? I'm coming to sit. I don't get to go to church. A lot. Except at home in my closet. But on Sundays I don't get because Sundays I'm always doing something. I just want to go sit. And so for the last two weeks I've been able to go and just sit. No responsibilities. Not worrying if this person is getting up at the right time or if this person is here or none of that stuff or what song are we doing or what's point number five. No, I have to worry about any of that. Just sit before the Lord and just receive from Him. First church we went to was a church where Will and then, you know, I had to go and check out where he's going, you know what I mean? <laughs> See what they're teaching the boy, you know, I go check it out. And I have to admit, the first part of the sermon, I was on guard. <laughs> Contending for the faith. There's a lot of jump preached, Amen. Yeah. Contended for the faith. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, mm, okay, mm, okay. And then I got the point where I can just go, ah. Just sit at his feet. The person who I went there thinking was there 
was not preaching that Sunday. Do you know you can go and receive from the Lord regardless of who preaching that Sunday? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. 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 You know what some people do? Well, the pastor's not there, so I'm not going. You cheat yourself. Amen. Amen. And so it, may, it didn't matter. It didn't matter who Mr. Magoo could have been preaching that Sunday. It didn't matter as long as God was speaking to him. Because I was born there to sit at his feet. So, listen, folks. Take time of your multitask world. Be able to come and sit before the Lord without your phone. Being on a bench next to you and you looking at your phone. <laughs> or your phone goes off. That's a sign. Whoever, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not on you. Amen, amen. But, but your phone did go off. So now let me just kind of Take the opportunity. Turn your phone off. When you turn your phone off, you're saying that nothing's going to bother me. We'll have the TV on and try to pray. Amen. Amen. We'll have some music on and try to pray. Now I know there's some music that kind of helps us and gets us in, but I understand that. <laughs> But try to stop all the multitasking. We have more and more gadgets and less and less time. And they become like Martha. Distractions for us. And we get distracted in all of the stuff. So much so that we don't know how to approach God anymore. Because we got to have our phones. You get up in the morning to pray. Don't turn your phone on. Because what happens is that somebody, bzz, bzz, okay, you look at it, okay, there's a text. It draws your attention away. Turn the phone off. Stop multitasking with God. Go single, full on with God and see the result. Amen? Amen. We got that one? Yes, I Lastly, stop starving your life. What a disappointing thing. Martha missed the real meal. How many times do you come to church and miss the real meal? Because you're somewhere else. And you miss, you miss the meal. Get the meal. woman at the well. Jesus had finished talking to her. And the disciples had gone away to get food. And this is at the end of John chapter 4. And they had come back. And they brought the food. And uh, you know, they're saying aren't you going to eat? And he goes, I have food whereof you don't understand. And then the disciples, just being who the disciples are, turned to one another and said, is somebody else bringing something to eat? No! What he's saying is that his food our food is found in communion and fellowship and relationship with God. So that when you serve, make sure that you're eating. Father, we just love you today. We thank you for who you are. We live in a world full of distractions. Along with the distractions, Father, is there a definite pull that we have within ourselves for significance? We want to be important. We want to be noticed. We want you to notice us. We want to show you our love. We want to show you our devotion. But Lord, you're not asking us for any of those things. Help us to learn how to come and just sit at your feet. Help us to learn to eat from your table. Help us just to be who you're calling us to be. 
Help us not to starve spiritually. We need your character. And it can only come through us through quiet times when we spend quality time, uninterrupted time in your presence. Help us manage Martha who will cause us to miss the main meal. Father, I pray for those who have been driven. I pray for those who are the dormant. And God, I pray that you'll bring balance to our lives. So that we might hear those great words that we long for. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You are our shepherd. You know the sheep, and the sheep know your voice. Help us, God, to come out of the distractions, to come off the work detail, and help us know your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's stand quickly. Let's stand. Let's stand.